on a cold November night I met my missus right I feel it's come to life Yeah, 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 I'll be done soon. I will be done soon. Hello, my darling Fumi Nation. How are you? <laughs> How are we? My name is Fumi Desalovold. For those of you that are stopping by for the very first time, you're so very welcome indeed. Let me just adjust that. I guess you want to see the look, my darlings. Okay, let me get up. This is an old, old, old Versace dress. It must be about 20 years old yeah 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 yeah. are we living are we loving my darlings it's got kind of sexy slit and then look at the back are we living and loving and you know what i like about this this has the panty attached to the dress is that not fabulous i live and i love so that's the shing ding that we are doing today it's been so crazy so 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 crazy but we're here Alrighty. Um, when Monique went on to Club Shay Shay, she talked about her eldest son, Shalom. You said, your first son, yes, that you're trying to get it, but it robbed you of a lot of things of a mother-son relationship. It did. And so you made sure not to make the mistake this time around. What's your relationship like? Is he re resentful of that? We're still very much separated. Okay. And 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 it's a it's a it's a um. It's one of those things where you have to pray to the universe and say, "Let time do the healing." Mm -hmm. And that's it. Right. That's it. Let time do that healing. It may heal it in time, and it may not. Right. And that's something that we as parents have to say. Listen. Right. I've done what I've could do i've taken accountability for it now it's up to you right that's like when somebody's saying shannon i want to apologize to you now it's up to you whether or not to accept it. whether or not to but once i give it to you i've done my part mm -hmm. and don't apologize like no punk i'm just sorry for everything uh-uh <laughs> uh-uh uh -uh. that gets your of it no break it down let's go bit by bit so right. that way we know you understand <laughs> The offense that you've done. Right. Now, I'm not saying because I've had to do that. Needless to say, uh, she had talked about how the relationship had been strained and how when she had him so, so young, she wanted, she did not want to be a mom. She wanted to be famous. She wanted to be an actress. She wanted to run after her career. Time that when he was a little boy, I wasn't interested in being a mother. I was interested in being a star and I was interested in being famous and I wasn't interested in being a wife. I was, I was interested in taking pictures and red carpets and signing autographs and traveling the world. So I didn't really put the focus in. And now that I'm 52 and he'll be 30, well, I pay for that. There's a price you have to pay for that. And I had to apologize to my son. That interview that she had with Club Shishi, which went viral, also brought a lot of stuff out. And we remember D.L. Hoogley, I did an episode on that, and how he came out full force steaming. And um, he said a couple of things. D.L. Hoogley came right out and called Monique a liar. Straight up, he said, anywhere, let's meet. And he was hot about that. Well, Club Shay Shay is getting messier and messier. Uh, it's almost like Wendy Williams didn't go anywhere. She just got a weight set. Um, and so Monique was on. Every time I see Monique these days, she's on uh, doing some greasy video with her and her daddy complaining about something or working out. I don't know nobody that work out that much and gain weight unless every crunch you do has got capped in front of it. But apparently she goes on Club Shay Shay and tells the story about how she came on my radio show and I wasn't there at the time. 
and uh, uh, my co-host Jasmine Sanders played a game that we played all the time with everybody called Would You Rather. She apparently was so offended by that that she said she got off. She called me. Monique did. And she said I was very dismissive. Like, huh? Monique's a liar. When Monique did call me, I heard her, her complaints. I listened to her and I pulled the segment. So if I had been as dismissive as she alleges I was, that segment would have aired. It didn't because I respected her wishes. It it's also befuddles the shit out of me how somebody who has a comedian talks as much shit about everybody else as she does. She has the temerity to be offended about anything as much shit as you say about people. Then she encouraged everybody. Uh, allegedly, it stems from the fact that I used to always talk about her on video after video. And she encouraged her sweet babies to look at the video and find them. Do that. Do exactly what she says. And you know what you're not going to find? You're not going to find any evidence of that because Monique is a liar. She's lying about that. But what you will find is Monique talking about some uh, alleged contract dispute we had. Look at the ticket. It says D.L. Hughley, then Monique. She knows the story. But what she did in response to that, she talked about my dog, my wife. This broad even brought out my daughter's personal trauma. My daughter was molested and Monique brought that shit out and, t and told the world that I allowed my daughter in front of me. The lying mother, she knows she was lying. And it only stopped when everybody from my family checked her. It's interesting. You know what else you won't see Monique doing? You won't ever see a, her with her family, videos with her children or grandchildren because nobody with me. How do you have sweet babies when your own babies don't f with you? How do, how do you love us for real when there's no evidence of anybody loving you for real? Except your daddy, who you apparently have to pay. And FYI, daughters are paid for by daddies. Not daddies who get paid by their daughters. You'll never, you know what else you won't see Monique doing? Telling jokes. Monique, uh, if she just spends as much time actually writing jokes and writing her Netflix special as she did complaining about not having one, it wouldn't have been trash. It got the worst reviews of any Netflix special in history because that's what Monique does. She complains and she has grievances. You never see her being a human being. You never see her being sweet and warm to people, except when she's using it to butter somebody up to get something. There's a reason why everywhere she go, it starts everywhere she goes. How is it that nobody fucks with you? Not even your family. How do you? Well, I was on the road getting it. I get it every goddamn week. Look at my schedule versus yours. See how much I'm going. And I still manage to have a relationship that I cherish with my children. Can you say the same? You can't. Because all you do is talk about your grievances and who did you wrong. There's a reason you fought by yourself. There's a reason you got to pay a man to love you. It's sad. There's an old adage that says you can't buy love. It's a shame, Monique, that you probably always will have to. And, um... Shalon responded to everybody's shock and surprise. Hi, <laughs> I am Shalon. I am a stand-up comedian, Monique's oldest son. Um, I guess I felt the need to make this video to just provide some context into this false narrative about her praying to the universe in order to reconcile our relationship or whatever the hell it is. Um, I wrote it all down so that way I don't go all over the place and get emotional or anything like that. I can, so I'm gonna talk like I'm reading a script, but it's just gonna help me kind of stay together. Um, but uh, to address the uh, Club Shay Shay interview that she did, where she states that she prays to the universe in regards to reconciling our relationship, as I stated, um, is odd. Uh, my mother and I both know that that is a very false narrative and I would like to free her of having to continue telling that lie. Faith without work is dead and neither one of us cares to put forth any effort to reconcile with the other. Uh, we are separate as she put it because she doesn't care to be my mother any more than I care to be her son. Neither one of us uh, has had the desire to reach out to the other in a very long time and I don't think that either of us anticipates that feeling ever returning. Speaking with my mother directly in my experience will either lead to some odd newfound moment of clarity in regards to how she was as my mother or she retreats back to daddy to move forward with a conversation and I'm tired of hearing my mother's truths. Um, newsflash, I'm not sure if people know, but standing in your truth doesn't make you noble. Um, I'm not 
sure people are aware of that. Uh, but responding this way, I feel as though it allows me to say my piece uninterrupted um, to those wondering, well, why say something now? Mm, call it a form of therapy for me, I suppose. Um, but when her daddy had intentionally state, stated that they have three sons, but his wife is on the internet talking about the fourth son in a video that has millions of views that rubbed me the wrong way um but anyway to inform a child that you are not interested in being a mother at a time when that kid is the only kid that has the potential to lead a child to believe that you are not interested in them specifically uh, but to take it a step further <clears throat> you also admit my mother had also admitted to me that she didn't do the best job that she could do um, which would also make one begin to question you know all of your past decisions and prior emotional interactions but to be completely honest and fair um, you know, those were things that I was willing to get over. You know, nobody's perfect, we're all human, but my mother showed a clear lack of humility, compassion, and consideration when taking any level of accountability for those things. Um, my mother does a fantastic job of acknowledging a lot of things, but she doesn't take accountability very well, and anything that she may take true accountability for, it's only at her convenience, uh, in my experience. Um, but if I had to guess, though, her interest in being a mother probably started around the time that she married her daddy and had his children. Um, but that interest, you know, obviously seemed one-sided, and as it should have been. Um, by that time, I'm in my late teens, so to some degree, the <coughs> excuse me, the neglect becomes easier to hide or validate. I guess you could say there are now two baby boys in the house, you know, that require attention. Um, but still, during that time, however, I still watched her enjoy the love and admiration of total strangers more than my own. Uh, to this very day, my mother has never expressed to me when, if ever, um, she became interested in me as her son that did lead me down a path of questioning my self-worth and struggling to understand the value of a mother in a child's life. In the interview, she also states that she gave me an apology, but an apology to a son from a mother that consciously showed no interest in him holds no weight. Um, there are still women to this day. Uh, that my mother will give credit to for being more of a mother to me than she ever could. Her assistant, my cousin, being one of them. Um, every time, though, that my mother would state that she was right here whenever I was ready, um, that ideology still blows my mind today that a person could openly admit to being an uninterested, not put my best foot forward type of parent and be so self-centered that they still express to the kid you have to come to me when you ready you got to come to me for us to make this right <laughs> okay um but i'm not sure what my mother could possibly think that she has shown me in the past or have for me now that's not money goodness gracious that would make me want to come to her or or whatever that whatever those feelings are supposed to be um a mother is supposed to be the first woman that a boy falls in love with. Uh, I loved my mother very much, uh, but my mother loved things more than she loved me. And she would validate her love for me by giving me things and would proceed to call me ungrateful or inconsiderate if said things did not have the desired effect. Um, I couldn't imagine what it's like to be her, though, uh, to ask God for what you want. And then he gives you what you need, though only for you to ignore it and have the audacity to ask God for something else. And um, I'm glad I don't, <laughs> I'm glad I didn't do that. Um, and when he told you no, uh, you went to the universe instead. Um, by no means though, do I want to give off any type of an impression that I am a victim of, of anything. Um, I, that is not the case. As you can see, I'm smiling from 
ear to ear. Um, I'm alive. I'm happy. I'm a dad. Um, I'm healthy, I think. <laughs> I drink a lot of water. I'm getting over a cold now. Um, you know, I still have my days just like everybody else. And, you know, there were a few things that she did teach me along the way. Uh, I did learn how not to love from my mother. Um, I also learned to make sure that I never lose so much of who I am that I have to validate it through another person. Um, and though I feel as though, you know, in hindsight, you know, I think she did it reluctantly. I do appreciate my mother, you know, for showing me what the top of the mountain looks like. You know what I'm saying? It did give me perspective on what hard work and dedication can get you. But I don't want something like that at the cost of giving up something that I created. Not, I don't want. I don't want it that bad. And speaking of creations, I genuinely, truly, I really did want my mother to have a relationship with my daughter. Um, I even fought through those intrusive thoughts that were, if she wasn't interested in you, what makes you think she's going to be interested in your kid? Um, but it took my mother no time at all to prove that those intrusive thoughts were correct. Um, but what I can say, good for her, the universe did, uh, you know, bless her with three other sons, bless her with three other sons, and God willing, um, you know, I'm sure that one of them, all three of them are adults now, so I'm sure that all, you know, one of them, God willing, if not all three of them, will make her the grandmother that she wants to be. Um, I'm, I look for, I still look forward, you know, to that moment for her. Um, but overall, when it comes to the boys, though, uh, I am happy that whenever they do hear me talk, or, sorry, my phone did something weird, but no, but whenever they hear me talk, um, they don't know what it is. They can't, they can't relate to what it is that I'm saying. My experience with my mother is not their experience, um, with our mother. Uh, so my prayer for her and them is that they continue to see her the way that they see her now. Um, I do also want to make sure that I say thank you to my mother for giving me life. Without that moment in time, I wouldn't have had my little one. But outside of that moment, there isn't anything that either of us, that either of us has to offer the other. Um, in my opinion, it's a waste of God's time and the universe's time for praying for something that you were not willing to put forth any effort to obtain. Uh, putting the work into becoming Monique is more important to my mother than being my mother. And I do not believe that it was, it was never about her being there and waiting for me but it was supposed to be about me being there and waiting for her um my mother's value had reached such a low point in my life that i no longer found it necessary to either want to wait for her or even go to her um but like i said man i'm super grateful that she has the opportunity to do it all over again you know i'm happy for her i hope the cat williams tour goes well but you know, the narrative that she prays for us to reconcile is a false narrative. It's not real, not appreciated if she stopped saying stuff like that. A very well-rounded young gentleman. He spoke eloquently. He didn't skip a beat. He didn't sound resentful or like it was coming from malice. He really, for me, spoke from his heart. But being a mom, I could see that he was in shambles, that he loves his mother, he misses his mother, and he's very upset. I was going to leave it alone. I wasn't going to talk about this at all, as a matter of fact, until Monique came onto social media to respond to her son with her present husband, Sydney. That's where I got pissed off. There was a Instagram that was put up, or I guess. It was TikTok, baby. TikTok that was put up by. My son, my oldest son, Shalom. And this is what I want to say to this. There are some people that are saying, oh, you should be ashamed of your mothering skills. You should be ashamed of yourself. This is what I'll say. Let's let it play out. Because the same ones that said to me, I was crazy, I was deranged, we watched it play out. So just like with my son, we'll watch this play out. And I, I do want to address this though, Shalon. When you say her daddy, her daddy, 
Then that's when mommy going to say, stop playing, because you know this has been Uncle Sid your whole life. Uncle Sid knew you before you knew you. <laughs> so for you to say her three sons, yes, you're absolutely right. He has three sons. He can't claim you as his son because he's always been Uncle Sid, and he knows your daddy very well. And love that brother. And the irony of all of this is not what is said, but what's left off. Yes. See, you're, you're leaving off the fact that the last time we laid eyes on you, your mother got you everything you needed for the newborn baby about three years ago. You're forgetting about how I, from Georgia, am talking you through getting your car after we gave you the half of the down payment for it. And you were 31 years of age, 32 years of age at that point. And I'm negotiating the deal with the dealer for you as you sit there. And you have the vehicle you're driving right now because of your mother. These are the things that you're leaving out when you are expressing what you're expressing in reference to your mother. You're not expressing the relationship that you have with your father, where you spoke ill to him, not to mention spoke ill to your mother, but somehow your mother and father and I all have a loving relationship and communicate back and forth because of the love that we have for you. The one thing these individuals and to the individuals out here that oftentimes speak after they've heard one side of the story, there's an old saying, Believe half of what you see and none of what it is that you hear. Please don't take our word for it. But what we will convey is this. Those who are parents and have raised their parents up to being adults. The children. Raise their children up to being adults. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> Those who are parents that raise their children into adulthood know that there comes a time and a place in which they determine their own decisions, their own path. You can have multiple children that multiple children that are raised in one house, but they act and they take on different things. The reason why it was so important for us to entertain these conversations that we typically have privately or that we're influenced to have privately amongst the people in our community is because we need to stop being embarrassed about being human beings and about being black human beings. You will oftentimes hear us saying, we are embarrassing ourselves in front of them. Who is them? Who are they? Because when you hear someone articulate these things, that is the slave's mentality that makes us believe that we as black people need to conduct ourselves with dignity because white people are watching. You should conduct yourself with dignity because the spirit of you is watching. But we need to have these conversations out loud and taboo because we have a finite period of time together here on this earth. You will travel through infinity with the spirit that you have all alone and you will not remember the ridicule that you receive, but you will be judging yourself. You will be t determining for the rest of your life which way that you go as you have thus far. So this conversation is about speaking directly to what situations are. And many people oftentimes, when they are uh, presented with an issue, they stay quiet, they hide, they disappear. And what we're saying is that's not who we are because what you cannot do is you cannot trick an honest person. Come on. You can demean you can say whatever you want to say about them negatively, but what will happen is truth has a way of standing the test of time. I, I, I forgot to have my, my phone to read the last text message that I gave to you, Shalon, where I told you about the understanding of how you are speaking to a woman and how you as a man and how you perceive things may be completely different from how your wife, how your mother, how your sister, how your daughter will look at things. 
And when you learn how to communicate a little bit better, then things happen a little bit better because of the challenges that this young brother has had with mental illness. So we're communicating that out loud to speak to our community to say, listen, y'all, if we have more public conversations, there will be less private angst. Come on. There will be less private issues that we carry on because we're afraid to communicate in front of white folks. So when we get to a place where you want to be free, you will stop being scared to say what's real. You'll stop being fearful of having conversations that normally take place in private and nobody ever really knows the outcome. Being a parent is not easy at all. Being a parent is not for the weak. I did an episode for my very, very young daughters and I had told you that you should get a doll. And I wanted you to dress that doll. I wanted you to feed that doll. I wanted you to consider that that doll had to be taken care of. So if you needed to go out, either you took the baby with you or you look for a babysitter. You have to have the reality of what it is to take care of another human being because it's not easy. And that baby will get in the way of your plans. You have to maneuver everything around this baby, around this child. I wanted you to have that baby for a month. For those of you who are sleeping with your boyfriends without any protection and you think that this cotton candy love that you're doing now will actually transcend into mommy and daddy and everybody dedicated. You don't have the wherewithal. You don't. When you're young, you don't have any experience at all to fall back on to say, I can be a good parent. I am not talking about everybody. I'm talking about those that find themselves in a situation where they say, I don't want to be a mom anymore, but it's too late. It's not as if you can return the child to a shelf and say, you know what, I'm out of here. Having said that, Monique ran after her career. It wasn't as if she ran out to do drugs, to, you know, be an alcoholic, just to be a lazy mom. She went after her career. That, that, that thing inside of you that will never give you peace. I get it because it's the same with me. You got to do what you got to do. But there are sacrifices that are made. And it happens a lot with firstborn children. They're the little parent. They're the nanny. They're the ones that are always supposed to know better because they're the eldest. But they're still children. And they also need their parents. So when you delegate this to them, that to them, they're children too who also need their parents. I had Adrian much later in life, as a lot of you know. And when I look back, it could have only worked out this way. Because the mother that Adrian has now is not the mother that he would have had when I was in my 30s. No, I really was not even there yet. I only got to be the mother that he has now in my 40s. All of us are different. And I thank God for him because I have the patience. I have the patience. I have the understanding. And I am so lucky I work from home. I curtail my own hours and I can move everything really and truly around him. On top of which he is only one child. I only have one child and I have a wonderful husband who is an even better father. It goes later in our lives. I could have only done it this way. And because everything has really mapped out copacetic I like to give you girls advice. Travel, get your education, make your money before you settle down. Make sure that you know the guy, that the guy is more of a father and a husband than anything else because tight abs ain't gonna cut it. I felt Sydney had no place or position for two things. To talk about a young man who you claim 
is not your son and his uncle said, which to me is ridiculous. And for you to air out and say that he has mental issues. To be very honest, personally, it looked as if you and Monique had mental issues as opposed to him. That's how it looked like. You're a mother till the day you die, Monique. You're a mother till the day you die. It does not matter how old your child is. I cannot think of Adrian and I having this kind of relationship. I couldn't think of it. I would have to run after him because I have to make up for those years when I wasn't there. For those years when he wanted you to be at the football match and you weren't there. For when he had his homecoming, for when he went to the prom, for when he had some little things on his mind and you weren't there. When he saw you most and you were loved so much on television, but you weren't there. He were not even there for him to show you off. It's not enough for you to say, I took accountability. That's hogwash. You have to go to him every single day, week after week, month after month. Love on him, love on his daughter. When he said it, I just, it, it hit a spot. That if it wasn't me, maybe my daughter. Maybe your son is a little too needy. I'm not going to put all of it on you. But this did not have to come to social media. Not at all. This was not a WhatsApp family chat of which we had no business being a part of. I love you, Monique. Just the other day, I was watching you when you did the entire dance of Beyonce. You're fabulous. I really think you are. You're an Academy Award winner. You're a mother of four. The way you treat my child indirectly tells me how you love me. I've seen many families that have adopted other children. I told you of the story of my ex-boyfriend when I was pregnant with Adrian. He said for me, anything happens, you and the baby come. I'll adopt him. I'll take you. I don't see an issue. Even if Shalom's father is alive. You know what? I'm a father to you. You are my son. That I love your mom. That I'm sleeping with your mom. That your mom gave me additional children. Your brothers. You're my son. That's what Sid should have said. If not Sid, step all the way back. Have several seats. Because you would never talk about your sons like that. The other twins that you have. At the end of the day, what? Wasn't it precious that you talked about that? You know what? I don't want to go on tour. They didn't pay me on top of it. I want to be home for my twins. Because I want to do it right. Let me tell you how you do it right. You do it right by going after your first child. Because you know better. And you know because of the twins that you have, how much he missed. Shalom spoke from pain. That was all I detected. It came from pain. These are boys that are becoming fathers. And he says, I, I can't depend on love. I can't because he never got it. And he has a beautiful daughter, your granddaughter. We have to do better. We cannot be arrogant. We cannot be uncomfortable with the stain that we threw on the carpet. If it's a constant reminder, let it be. I would run after Adrian. I would run after him. I'm not in a position to say I take accountability. I carried him for nine months. I carried him. He's the only way. I don't know why I'm so emotional. I, I, I don't like this when it comes with children. Because we are so responsible for the way that they turn out. We are. He knows how your heart beats on the inside, Monique. He's the only one. Not Sid, but Shalom. That Shalom responded to this tells you how much he loves you still. He sat down and watched that interview unbeknownst to you. And it triggered him because he said he has three sons. So what about me? Children are very, very, very fragile. They love you always and they stop loving themselves. That's what happens. I am 50. I'm going to be 55 
and I am still my father's child. But he came, out, looked after Adrian, looked after Ula. Okay, so for me, you know what? I'll take care of the house. I'll make sure that the house is locked at night. <laughs> yes. It's the greatest joy. And you know, this life is so interesting. It will turn out to be shalom that will look after you in your later years. The child that you don't think anything of now is the one that turns around and takes care of you. You have to be very humble in this life. I've learned that. You have to be very humble because it never turns out the way you think. And if you think you can run away from something and not take responsibility for it, it shows up at your front door at a time when you're weakest at the time when no one else is there and you have to face it head on. Life is short. You have four boys, four boys. Love all of them. Have a party, have a dinner, have a Sunday lunch. Go out there, drive all the way out there and go and see Shalom. Just surprise him. Say, Shalom, I'm here. I'm here. Let me take care of the baby. That's what my father did. He just came. My mom and dad, they were here for five months. Five months. For me, Adrian, chop, chop, let's go. Boom, boom, boom. Laughing, playing. I put the pictures there. Children are such a blessing. And I can understand how hard it can be as a single mom, especially when you're left alone. Especially as I have heard, you're no longer with the guy. And it's a boy that looks at a spitting image of the man that you no longer love. It's not the child's fault. It's not your fault. I'm not blaming you, Monique. But this scenario that has played out here is a hot smoking mess. You should never have responded to your son on social media. That's a no-no. And Sid had no business speaking on Shalom. Because as he greatly said, he's Uncle Sid. You be quiet. Take responsibility, Monique. Take responsibility. You cannot shelve your hands off. No. Because guess what? You live in him. He lives in you and in your grandchildren. And you've done it better for the twins. Do it even better. Turn it right around. As you're driving down the freeway like this, you turn that car around and you go back to your son. You go back to that boy that experienced everything with you. That's how I feel with Adrian. When I was carrying Adrian, we were living at 42 Gooch House, a little small two-bedroom flat. We were busy with the Juvia's Place collab. Adrian was with us, came to New York, came to California, came to Mexico, came when we were moving. When we were in the rain, we just put him in his little buggy and then just cover it. And he'd just be looking at me. And I would tell Adrian, Mommy gotta do this. Please just be a good little boy until I come back. And when I come back, all I say, he didn't cry. He was a good boy. Adrian went through a lot with me. He went through a lot with me. And I'm so grateful to him for that. We're trying to go on tour, Adrian, you know. Mommy got to do this. Will you let me do this? I can't imagine. Because one day, Adrian will grow up, big boy, have his own wife and his own children. And the time would have gone. Think about it. Think, really, really think about it. Take us out of the group chat. Run after your son. Run after him. Go and find him. It might take months. But you keep on every day, every single day, every single day. You talk, you talk, you cry. Because that boy was crying. I heard it. Lovely boy. Handsome boy, young man. Don't make mistakes. Don't make careless mistakes, okay? It's not easy. It's not easy being a parent. That's why I turned 360. And I said, Mama, you take this. Daddy, take this. Mama, I've done this for you. I get it. It's not easy. You step and repeat. 
We love our kids. We never stop loving our kids. We never stop loving. Maybe it's the African in me. I don't know. But we never stop loving our kids. We are parents till the day we die. Don't forget to like and to subscribe. Hit the notification button, my darlings. And I'll see you sooner than later. All of my love. Thank mm -hmm. you.